Hello guys, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. It is very hot where I live. Um, so, <laughs> trying to get some inside time, I'm just uh, s uh, sitting in the cold basement doing some Apollo and KSP stuff. Um, so, the point of this video is I get a lot of questions on how to do certain stuff in K in uh, NASSP, uh, certain things how to do this, certain things how to do that. It's just easier if I just made this uh, this basic tutorial or tips and trick video, in my opinion, to do. Uh, first thing off the list, um, there is a user, if I can pull him up. Uh, no, I got him. A David Riddell. I don't know how to pronounce that, but that, anyways, um, had asked, "Is there a, is there a fully automatic mode? If so, how to do it?" I am new to in a has this be well, David. Uh, it's very easy. All you gotta do is. On your main screen of Orbiter 2016, um, make, go to Extra, then go to Vehicle Configuration. For me, there is three tabs. From uh, Basically, if you didn't have Project Apollo installed, you just basically ha just have the two. Uh, but if you click on here, it pulls up a configuration window, and you can just make make this however you want. You can also do if the AI is smooth, uh, scrolling, disabled, um, split screen, low resolution, high resolution, multiple split screen, this and that, and for uh, quite a few things. Uh, but if you want to do a auto uh, Matic checklist um, execution. Uh, all you gotta do is ch uh, check this one. And if you're brand new to NA SSP, I highly recommend checking out some of my videos. There are a couple of other channels that do fantastic work with NA SSP that know a lot more than I do. I, I mean, I'm not an expert, but I'm now rookie at this. Been doing this for a few years. Um, and learning from the checklist and stuff like that, and I completely understand the whole idea of wanting to watch how it's done. Well, plus I'm lazy, so it's a good way to, you know, have something to do it for you. Um, but I highly recommend checking this second box, and it's going to do it slowly, and I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. I come over here. And I really do apologize for some idiotic reason. My order is not playing the sound. It's very laggy. I really got to set aside some time to muck around with this and to try to fix the whole thing. I'm thinking of just pulling a plug on this one and re downloading, installing, and installing all my add-ons for Orbiter 2016. Should really get 2010, but well. And I'm going to show you what the slow execution for this looks like. So, Control P. Like I said, it's going to be a little laggy, so. And, and it's just going to do all what is on the checklist right here for the MFD. Um, it's just going to do it very slow and very steady versus um, if you did not add that one box check, you'll just do it like a normal speed. Um, and if you're very new to this, this makes it a whole lot easier to actually go between uh, between looking at the checklists and watching how it's done because you can look at both pretty quick. Then you can also get 
uh, a good eyesight for where everything is, and now it's on time of light, and I'm just going to show you some of the switches, how that actually happens. Now, if, like I said, if this was not put on slowly executed, it just goes, uh, zip through the whole thing, um, it will be probably almost done, yeah, almost done by now, if it wasn't, uh, set to slow. Um, sometimes I feel lazy, sometimes I want to do something else for a little while, let this coast, let this run, um, and I would double check the checklists, and I'll just have it execute by itself. It's not very hard to do, set up. I just showed you exactly how to uh, do it. It's very basic. Um, another thing I've had in other videos, people ask me, and I pretty much made this in a tutorial about the P52 IMU VLine and Star Trek and this and that for the sextant and the telescope. It's for the F9. So right now I have the uh, F9 triggered. And you can tell you have, well I have, a bunch of these green markers right here. There's one for 21, 22, one's for 23, 24. Over here you got uh, tw uh, 20 and that this right here is actually not a orbiter default it is a add-on that is included with NA SSP and if you uh, wrong thing if you go straight to display you have this all pulled up go to display and I'm going to show you which one to hit for the um markers so it's celestial and you can also convict uh configure it to how you want it so the only thing i got installed for this specific um tab is apollo agc navigation uh stars and these stars are very important in apollo flight these are the, the stars that um tell the computer where you are in your position and it'll choose like one to two stars typically two um and it'll determine your current position in space then uh, straight after that you have a IMU realign which is basically you go to panel one and you sit there, uh, sit there with it, the scrolls and um, it'll just tell you with the uh, FDAI error needles. So you, so you just sit there and toy with it. It'll tell you your exact position in space or your exact attitude. Attitude is more correct word for it. I've also noticed here. I'm going to also do this. Also noticed. I'm going to turn this off for a second. I, well, I didn't really notice. Uh, I had a person comment. I tried looking for this. It's, it's a pain to find actual good advice and tips and tricks in this uh, flight sim. Just because there's a lot of people still working on it. There's always new updates. Sometimes the, um, every day there's an update. Sometimes it's a, every week or a month. Sometimes it's a few months, depends on what's all being done, and they're doing actually fantastic work um, on the um, flight sim. It's actually unbelievable how accurate it, it feels like I'm flying the actual thing, and they're always updating bu bugs and stuff like that, so. But anyways, um, if you're sending your delta velocity, this is your EMS entry measurement uh, system. If you go over here, you have a delta velocity EMS set. So this is the the speed, not speed, uh, delta velocity range that um, you can keep track of and it, it'll 
also communicates between the uh, computer and itself and the uh, itself from the computer to the uh, EMS so you can this is very basic um, but what I did not know um, how to do something is by one digit point one digit is um, to right click and it's sit the there and hold it and it's just going to do that or or else you're just going to get a bunch of jumbled um, numbers and, and that's pretty much um, a dead waste of time just because you don't want a bunch of jumbled numbers you want actual measurements of range and speed for delta velocity so it's very important to actually get this correct so, or else you're just screwing yourself um, throughout the mission because I have had it inc uh, incorrectly uh, set and it just uh, sits there and doesn't do what I wanted it to do. So like I said, just right click on, right click and hold for it to do that. There are also keys. I can't remember, remember all of them. I'm going to put, to put a link in the description to where you can actually find these hot keys or key combinations or whatever you want to call it. Um, and these certain keys are used to actually control Disky and also AGS, Apollo. Uh, abort guidance system excuse me so uh, abort guidance system is uh, strictly for the LEM it's a LEM it's a um, luminary device so I also want to do a video of one through how many programs there are in the disk key and I'm going to basically break down everything uh, for those programs, to, uh, discuss what they actually do in a nutshell, and continue on throughout the whole entire mission, depending on uh, like missions like Apollo 7, 8, even though they're very different, uh, Apollo 8 uh, for burns and stuff like that, for moon-bound travels versus Earth-bound travels, because they use, say, Apollo uh, command module around the, the earth quite a few times uh, for Apollo 8, 9, um, and Apollo Soyuz and the, the Apollo program for the, um, well, it wasn't much of a program, but the Apollo um, Skylab missions and stuff like that. Um, thank you for watching my video. <laughs> I know r right now it's just... Um, me, I'm not very alert, and uh, this is me just being very sluggish, um, making this video. If you would love or like to support me, um, in this channel, obviously, keep on watching. I would like this channel to actually grow in size. I would like to actually do this, because I actually enjoy talking about stuff like that. So I, this is actually one of my favorite hobbies to actually do is flight. So um, I get pretty giddy and excited when anything has to do with flight, even building the the aircraft me and my dad have been involved with for the last year or so. So, but if you would love to support this channel, please go over to my Patreon and you can download any amount of money, anything. I will be extremely and highly grateful for your donations. I know during these times of uh, COVID-19, uh, I, I know there's not going to be a lot of takers. And I completely understand that. Use that for your own need because um, who knows how long this is actually going to last. And I hope, hopefully this uh, whole thing actually blows by and stuff like that. But if you do really choose to support me further, please uh, support my, go to my, Patreon, and please make a donation. 
I will see you guys hopefully in my next video, which is tips and tricks for KSP rendezvous and or orbital mechanics. I uh, will see you guys in the next video, I hope.